Hello again gamers, welcome back to, for another episode of Grokking Battletech. I'm the Board Game Captain and today I'm going to be telling you how to grok the Night Star. So I want to start by giving a big thank you to one of my viewers, MR, for requesting that I cover the Night Star in an episode of Grokking Battletech. Thank you MR, this episode is for you. The Night Star is one of my favorite clan invasion era usable assault mechs. This mech is is 95 tons of awesome. It is a absolutely fantastic mech with a great weapons loadout and a ludicrous amount of armor. Uh, this is a, uh, a good long range mech that has even more bite up close in case something comes in runs up on you thinking that maybe you are, are a one trick pony can only hit things at range. Well, they're going to be in for a nasty surprise when they get up close, too. So uh, we're going to start uh, by talking about the NSR 9J. Now, this is the original Star League era version uh, of the Night Star. It has double heat sinks. It's got a, a walking speed of 3 and a running speed of 5. It's, it's fairly slow, uh, but it's got a ton of armor and a ludicrous amount of weapons, and this is... The basic version of the Night Star is my favorite version of the Night Star. It's the one I use. Um, I love it to death, and I use it in lots of time periods because it is incredibly usable in lots of time periods. Uh, now, of course, a lot of the technology used to make this, because it includes Gauss rifles and double heat sinks, gets lost, so uh, it doesn't show up during the Succession War time period a lot. But that when everything gets rediscovered with the Helm Memory Core uh, during the Clan Invasion time period, this becomes a new favorite assault mech. Of a lot of uh, mech warriors and lance commanders during the clan invasion. So again, we've got a walking speed of three, a running speed of five, no jump capabilities. We have 50 armor on the center torso, the full nine on the head, 32 on either side torso, 32 on each arm, 40 on each leg. And in the rear, we've got 10 on the center torso and eight on, eight on each side. So yeah, really, really decent. We've also got 14 double heat sinks for a total of 28 heat sinking capacity. Now let's talk about the armament. Because really, in my opinion, while the 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 armor is, is amazing on this mech, the armament is where it is at. So we have a Gauss rifle in each arm and we have a ludicrous, and I do mean ludicrous, seven tons of gauss rifle ammo there is no normal size game that you're going to play that you will ever run out of ammo with the night star 9j in because even in a fairly large game even in in, in a a three lance game you would be hard pressed to run out of ammo for your gauss rifles uh in with this mech now in addition to the two gauss rifles for backup weapons we've got an er PPC, uh, to give do 10 damage at up to 23 hexes range, a slightly longer range than even the Gauss rifles. Uh, this is to give you another, uh, a little bit of extra long range fire support because, of course, the Gauss rifles are doing 15 to two different spots on the enemy mech if they hit with both. And then that ER PPC is doing another 10 to another spot at a uh, very long range. But if things try to close with you uh, to help protect against uh, light max kind of try to run in on you you've got a pair of medium pulse lasers and a small laser to help round out the weapons loadout so they come in close where you're even more likely to hit with the the er pvc and the gauss rifle as long as uh they haven't made it within the minimum range of the gauss rifles and made it a little harder to hit uh when they're at that sweet spot where they're in short range but not minimum range yet on the gauss rifles you can hit with everything you can unload on something and just rip it in half there's just so much damage this mech can do now i've already talked a little bit about how great the ammo capacity is on this mech it's actually way more than you would even need um Something else that's pretty amazing about the Nightstar NSR 9J is its heat capacity. That 28 heat is actually significantly more than you you would need because the the Gauss rifles only cause one point of heat each. The medium pulse lasers cause four points. That ER PVC, the the hottest of all the weapons on this mech, causes 15, and then the small laser could cause one more. So if you're firing everything, that is a total of 22 heat and again you can soak 28 which means running and firing everything you won't accumulate any heat with the night star nsr 9j which is pretty freaking amazing 
Um, as, you know, especially for a Star League era mech. A lot of Star League era mechs have heat issues. This one has no heat problem whatsoever. In fact, similar to the large amount of, of ammunition, the amount of heat uh, consumption here is a little bit of an overkill. Because uh, you, you could even lose some of this heat consumption and still be fine because again you could run and fire everything and not overheat at all all right so now let's talk about some of the variants now um the variants some of them are more interesting than others but generally speaking i don't like any of them better than i like the base version so i do want to say that the base version is my favorite now the first variant we're going to talk about is the nsr 9 fc that's foxtrot charlie now the 9 fc is a uh, version where we remove the Gauss rifles, replace them with LBX-10 auto cannons in order to up the speed. Um, I don't like this version. So yes, I I get why you would want to make this faster. It's that it's basically that 3.5 is kind of the fair fairly standard speed for assault max, except for the really really slow ones. Um, there's only a few max slower than this really, but uh, I don't think the increased speed is worth giving up the Gauss Rifles. The Gauss Rifles are amazing. It's, uh, in my opinion, the reason to take a Night Star. So giving up the Gauss Rifles for a pair of LBX-10 autocannons, in my opinion, is a huge downgrade and is not worth it. Uh, so I would never take the 9FC over the 9J. Now, the next version I want to talk about is the NSR 9SS. So this was one that, storyline-wise, was originally made to be in the Solaris 7 uh, mech arena, uh, where they have one-on-one -on -one mech fights to, to help prove designs generally. And this is a really interesting one. So... This is a mech that, that you're going to run a bit and try to get in close to your opponent to unload on them because it has an Ultra Auto Cannon 20 and an LBX Auto Cannon 20 instead of the Gauss Rivals. So this is one I could see myself using. I've never tried it myself, but I would because it, it is interesting. And especially if you could put a mech warrior on this uh, that has Demoralizer or uh, put it in a lance where you get Demoralizer for the mech warrior uh, in your night star this could be really interesting because you could run demoralize enemies making it harder for them to hit you uh, until you get into range where you start unloading with those the ultra auto cannon 20 and the lb 10x auto cannon 20 um possibly dishing out insane amounts of damage so yeah i do think this is actually a really cool version i still don't like it better than the 9j but i do think it would be an interesting option and i would be willing to try this one out now the next version and this is the last of the standard versions there actually aren't too many variants uh on the night star is the nsr 10d now the nsr 10d is a much later era mac with some very high tech components and a lot of mixed tech stuff uh, so this this is one that I would not generally consider using, but if I did play in the later time periods when these uh, technologies were available, this is actually a pretty interesting one. So in the arms, you've got a pair of light Gauss rifles followed by clan spec ER large lasers, which do 10 damage each at fairly long range. This is not bad. The the light Gauss rifles do an eight. The the ER large laser doing 10. It's, it's a lot of smaller weapons versus the two larger weapons, but it could be really good. And then it's got a clan ER PPC, which does do 15 damage, uh, mounted in the right torso and a medium X pulse laser. Uh, this is not bad, but I, you know, generally speaking, it's a couple extra hundred uh, battle value, and I probably would still take the 9J. It's one I would try, but it's not one I would probably use regularly. But it's still, it is a decent variant. Now, there are two custom variants I do want to reference because they are really, really awesome. Uh, there is the NSR 9J Nightstar Brewbaker. Now, the Brewbaker uh, is the personal mech of Shelly Brewbaker. This Nightstar replaces uh, the standard weapons with the following. So, it has uh, clan spec Gauss rifles and three clan large pulse lasers and an er small laser so now the clan spec large pulse lasers have great range just like normal inner sphere pulse lasers they reduce the difficulty to hit by two and they do 10 damage apiece these are really good uh that combined with the two gauss rifles this is a absolutely deadly version this is one i would take 
Uh, but of course, you have to be playing with, uh, with mixed tech, allowing mixed tech max. But yeah, the the Night Star Brubaker is fantastic. Really, really good mech. The other of the two custom versions I want to talk about is the Night Star Holt, which is the mech of um, the commander of Holt's Hilltoppers, George Holt. So this custom version has the following weapons. It has a Gauss rifle in each arm. Combined with four tons of ammo, so they reduce the ammo to fit more more other weapons in. It has an ER PPC in the right torso, a large pulse laser in the left torso, an ER small laser in the head, and a Angel ECM suite. Uh, this also has triple strength Mimer. Now, the triple strength Mimer is interesting because you you actually do have a lot more things to heat up with this mech. Uh, and then once you start heating up, you can move faster, and that is kind of cool. You can get some extra speed on it. Plus, this does have a, a large array of different kinds of firepower. This is another one I definitely would play with. I think the Night Star Hold is actually quite good. All right, so that is it for all of the canon versions of the Night Star. But even given how awesome the, the custom variants are, uh, the, the standard version is still really my favorite version. I would try the others in some, some later and, and mixed tech you know, games, later era games, but the, the Night Star 9J is, is my go-to version of the Night Star. It is really, really awesome. But it's not perfect. No mech is perfect. There are a few issues. Like I said, the amount of heat it, uh, it puts out could, can't even accumulate any amount of heat. So it's, it's 28 heat sinking capacity is overkill. The, the ammo, the only reason I can think of to have the ludicrous amount of ammo in here is so that if you take crits on ammo uh, compartments, you're still not in danger of running out of ammo, even if you lose an ammo compartment or two, because it just has so much ammunition for those Gauss rifles. But it's a little bit of overkill. So I have a couple of slight redesigns. These are really just um, taking my favorite version of the Night Star, the uh, again, the 9J, and doing a bit of altering of its weapon loadouts. Now, the reason uh, I did two is because one is a very minor change, very minor, and the other one is very close to another assault mech. Um, so I, you know, I, I did two because of these things. So, all right, let's start with, uh, first we're going to talk about my very minor adjustment, the first I did with the uh, with my own personal mech design firm, uh, KIWF, of course, named after the first letter of the last names of its four founders, but affectionately nicknamed Kill It With Fire by its fans. So the Nightstar NSR 9J KIWF uh, is a very slight modification. I, it is literally just an upgrade kit that they sell to mech commanders who have night stars in their in their lances so that they can do this slight upgrade to them themselves with their own mech techs. And what it is, is you remove one of those seven tons of ammo, because I really think the seven tons is overkill, and instead just replace that one ton of ammo with an ER medium laser. Again, very slight change. You still have way more ammo for those Gauss rifles than you would ever need, but now you have one more weapon that uh, that gives you a little bit more close range damage capacity and actually a fairly decent medium range damage capacity too because it's an ER medium laser and the range on those aren't bad. Uh, and also it actually helps to justify all of those heat sinks. Now my other one is, is a little bit more of a change. In this one, we took off all the weapons but the Gauss rifles. We left on the ludicrous amount of Gauss rifle ammo. Uh, and we replace the small laser with an ER small laser, and we replace the rest of the weapons with a third Gauss rifle. So now we have three Gauss rifles, uh, we have uh, a ER small laser, and then we reduce the heat sinks down to just 10 double heat sinks, because you don't need 14 in a mech that, do that only produces a, a maximum possible of five heat from its actual weapons. Uh, so I knocked it down to the 10 double heat sinks, uh, but with all of that ammo now being justified by the three Gauss rifles, yeah, you can actually really use up a lot more of that ammo, and three Gauss rifles firing at the same target could really do a lot of damage. But again, the downside with this one is that it, it's very similar to another assault mech. I'm sure you know which one I'm talking about, uh, but there is another assault mech in the clan invasion time period who has three Gauss rifles, 
on a 100 ton mech. Uh, I have only an ER small laser to back up this version, whereas that one has a couple of medium, I think ER medium lasers, and that Mac um, has less ammo. This one has more ammo, so it's still different, but it is very similar in its weapon loadout to, a sim to an existing Mac, which again is why I did two different versions. This one I call the Nightstar NSR9J KIWF-2. So that those are my two custom versions. So now I'd like to talk to you a little bit about what Mech Warrior I would recommend putting in the cockpit of your Night Star. So I am going to put in Shelly Brubaker. Uh, Shelly Brubaker, which we just talked about uh, a few minutes ago, because she, in the storyline, has her own custom mech with mixed tech and crazy amounts of firepower. But I'm going to be putting her in the regular Night Star. Uh, basically, my idea here is, is this is supposed to be her in a night star before she upgraded it with all the mixed tech and such um you know but you could also use her very well in her own mixed tech night star which is also really awesome but here's the thing so shelly brubaker she's got a gunnery skill of one and a piloting skill of two now this is going to be amazing in your night star the danger here though is your opponent is going to get to put this these stats on one of their mech warriors, which if they're playing Inner Sphere is not much of a worry because there's not many mechs in the Inner Sphere that I would consider possibly better even than the Night Star. However, if you're playing against Clan, this could be worrying because they could wind up putting it on something really, really scary. That said, these stats on your uh, your Night Star is still going to be really, really awesome. Now, Shelly Brubaker's abilities cost four, so this is uh, a mech warrior you'll be using if you agree to use four cost mech warriors, and her abilities are really, really great for the Night Star. So her first ability is Sniper, which reduces the hit modifiers for range in half, which means that at medium range, you only get a plus one difficulty, and at long, only a plus two, which means you are quite likely to be able to hit enemies uh, at medium range and at least have a decent chance to hit them at long range uh, this is really really good in addition she has lucky one which means once per game you are going to get a re-roll so when you have that all important roll and you fire your gauss rifle and it misses you're like yeah i'm going to use my re-roll uh, remove the token from the card that you put there at the beginning of the game to represent that you had a re-roll and re-roll those dice get another chance to hit your target now I am now going to go over a suggested lance built around the Nightstar NSR 9J. So I've made a lance for them. Uh, I also, for this lance, I will be recommending Shelly Brewbreaker specifically as the mech warrior you'll be taking in this lance to pilot your Nightstar. Uh, and the lance that you will be using is a battle lance. Now the requirements for a battle lance is that 50% of the standard battle lance must be of the heavy weight or greater. Now we've already got one of the mechs uh, to help you with that requirement because we have an assault mech in the Night Star. And then also at least three units in this formation must possess any combination of brawler, sniper, and or skirmisher unit roles. So now the Night Star is not any of those roles. The Night Star is a juggernaut so we're we're looking for three other mechs that fit into brawler striker or skirmisher and we've got two skirmishers and a striker so we're going to be fine in regard to that now the bonus ability is that this star can re-roll an attack roll or failed piloting skill roll a total of six times per scenario now here's the thing Rerolls are going to be very important when you have big guns like Gauss rifles on the field. So you're going to put one token on Shelly Brewbreaker, another six in a common pool. Those are all rerolls you can use. You can't reroll the same uh, roll twice. So if you roll it, reroll it, and get a failure, it's done. But you will have a total of seven rerolls, one of which can only be used on your Night Star throughout the game, and that is huge for when those very important hits need to happen. So let's run over the other three mechs I'm gonna put in this lance with the Night Star to get this awesome ability. The first one uh, I'm putting in the lance is uh, to run up on a flank to intercept those speedy mechs that are trying to come around the flank and mess with your Night Star that's staying back and taking uh, well-aimed shots at individual mechs. And this is the Hatchetman. HCT5S. I forgot to mention that this particular lance is meant to, to uh, be, be used in the 
Civil War time period. This is specifically a Civil War time period lance, so every one of the mechs is available Civil War or earlier. Uh, so the Hatchiman HCT-5S, uh, this this is a, a fantastic, absolutely fantastic medium mech. It's got 464 in its movement. It's quite uh, maneuverable, though not super fast. It's got 10 single heat sinks. It's got an LB-10X auto cannon. It's got three medium pulse layers to help intercept those light fast mechs. And it has a hatchet, so when it gets up close and personal, it can chop into enemy mechs with nine damage with that hatchet. Uh, this is going to be a great interceptor mech for your flank. Now, the second mech um, I'm throwing out here, this is going to be a second mech to stay back and throw lots of clusters of damage at an enemy that you've already punched holes in their armor with your Night Star and its Gauss rifles. This is going to throw lots of clusters of damage to find those holes and do critical hits. And this is the Rifleman RFL-8D. Now the Rifleman RFL-8D is a skirmisher and, and this big 60 ton bruiser of a mech. He's got two rotary autocannon fives, two ER medium lasers. It's got 464 on the movement and a decent amount of firepower. Now those rotary autocannon fires, fives can deal out as many as six shots and you roll in the cluster hits table now i would under normal circumstances usually restrict myself with rotary order cannon fives to doing five shots because that act that one extra shot makes them just that bit more likely to jam and i don't i don't like to have to spend time unjamming them uh, i would use the six shots from each in situations where i really need to bring an enemy down but those five shots each are plenty under normal circumstances they will help to to just do little points of five points of damage all over the place on an enemy map to help find those holes you've already punched in their armor with the gauss rifle the two of them uh, we'll stay back and unload one mech at a time trying to bring them down. Now this last mech is a cheap mech that I was able to fit in uh, for the 6,000 6, battle value lance in the Civil War time period. This is a very cheap mech but a very fast mech to harass, to make your opponent nervous as it, as it comes around their flank and gets into their rear. And this is the Locust LCT-5M. Now this little mech has almost no armor we're talking about nine armor on the center torso eight on the sides six on the arms eight on the legs this is this is a very weakly armored mech but it has a walking of 12 and a running speed of 18. this thing is fast until you want to strike keep your distance run at 18 hexes make yourself ludicrously difficult to hit and then when you want to you run in point blank and on your weapons loadout you've got an er medium laser which you could actually harass with at about medium range as you're coming around the flank and then at point blank range you can unload with four er small lasers so this is a great thing to, to run around the flank and then um, run into the rear and unload on a, on an enemy's rear armor to just, you know, really unsettle them. But you never want to slow down with this. You want to be constantly moving uh, to harass your enemy and mess with them and try to uh, divert their attention. If they take shots at the Locust and miss, it's done its job so that your Night Star and your Rifleman can unload and your Hatchetman can intercept their own fast mechs that are coming at you. And that is how this Lance is designed to work. So there you have it. That is my take on the Night Star. Uh, tell me in the comments down below, do you have any uh, different ideas on how to use any of the variants of the Night Star? Do you have a different variant that is your favorite that I wasn't a fan of tell me about it why uh, why are they your favorite version of the night star also do you have different custom variants that you like to make for the night star and why why do you make those variants comment down below also if you have any requests for mechs that you'd like to see me cover in the series grokking battletech uh, i'm trying to focus on doing all of the mechs that were introduced in the star league succession war and clan invasion time periods first before i move onward to the to the later time periods uh, if you have any requests from mechs from those time periods that i have not yet covered feel free to also comment down below and if you enjoyed this episode of grokking battletech you'd like to see me do more like it be sure to give it a like share it on all forms of social media and if you haven't already please subscribe to the board game captain that's captain spell with a k on youtube and until next time game on